Hi, my name is Angie Patterson. I'm the Master Science Educator for Black Rock Forest. I'm here today with a group of Columbia University researchers, uh, and we are installing dendrometers. Uh, the dendrometer is a device that's connected to the tree, um, and what it does is it actually measures the growth of the tree um, due to the amount of water that's flowing into the system. So in this film, you will be able to see this uh, device being installed onto the bark uh, to really tell us some interesting answers to how trees are growing in our forest under our present climate. We are standing on the North Slope at Black Rock Forest, the site of the Future of Oak Forest study. On these plots, a proportion of trees were girdled in order to see how the surrounding environment would respond following the loss of oaks to pathogens such as sudden oak death. Girdling is defined as a circumferential cut made around the trunk of a tree that damages the tree's vascular system. This eventually results in the death of the tree. In a series of experimental plots located on the north slope, some plots had all of the oaks girdled or half of the oaks girdled. Some plots had all of the trees girdled that were not oaks, which were named the non-oak plots. And some plots did not experience girdling at all. These were defined as the control plots. Here, we are installing dendrometers on oaks that are on a non-oak girdled plot. Uh, right now, we are installing this uh, mini field station, which is a very small data logger. Uh, and we will be connecting it to this dendrometer sensor, which will measure the changes in tree stem size uh, throughout the study period. It, it has four AA batteries, uh, rechargeable, uh, mm -hmm. and, it, and it can uh, keep those charged using a small solar panel. Uh -huh. What are you doing, Kevin? So we're going to put the sensor over here, and we just want to make sure there's no loose bark that we're attaching to, okay. that the sensor attaches to a nice firm surface. Okay. So what are we using the multimeter for? Uh, I'm just checking the voltage of the batteries right now. To make sure they're nice and powered up? Yeah, they should be. They're charged overnight, but I just want to double check before we head out. Okay. Um, so I'm going to measure direct volt, voltage of uh, direct current. Mm -hmm. There are two kind of, there's a number of uh, pinholes here. Uh, one is ground, or two are ground. I'm just going to plug that in the, the ground. And then once there's VBAT, so when I touch the VBAT, it's going to time out to 5.465 volts. Okay. Uh, and so, um, yeah, so that is, that is about as fully charged as I can get. Okay, and that's, so if I use a different kind of rechargeable battery, it's going to be a different amount, right? Um, those are really high capacity. I like this brand because they, they are really high capacity. Um, I just don't spread down too hard, but... Sarah, you're going to have to do this blindfolded. Yeah. <laughs> oh, they, they, the master's going to... Oh, this, this is a recent admission. Cool. Oh. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Number one. Did you measure the diameter? Or Not yet. The, uh, oh, the students started. I got a tape in that bag. Yeah. Do you have one? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yep. Yep. He's got that yep. nice little DDH tape. Didn't yeah. know somebody, yeah. yeah. Send that around. I also have a notebook, but Sarah, do you have a notebook? Yeah, okay. So do we look more or less straight? Okay, you got 60.1. Yep. Grow and be strong. So you shave a little bit. Treat it flat. Yeah, um, you know, 
I, I'm not sure how important it is, but what you don't want is anything that's going to flake off during the course of the experiment. Mm -hmm. And these oaks have such thick bark that flattening it off like that is really no problem, so I usually do. You wanted to touch the tree, yeah, and now we'll get we'll get cell division and and moisture from the bark, the um, cambium, the flow on, and the immature xylem. The what? When you, when you do the no, uh, right now. So as it hide, if it if it is losing water right now, which it probably is, this is actually moving in. Okay. And then if the tree grows, it pushes the plunger out and we record both those. And you'll see it over the course of the day, just going up and down. There's only going to be so much stuff. So how do you separate all the things that are contributing to the growth? I mean, there'll be the flow, there'll be the... Yeah, so, so the theory is that cell division only happens, that you only grow when you expand. So there was a, a neat study by a guy named Roman Zweifel to ask if you could both shrink and grow. And he concludes that you can, but it's very rare and it's a very small amount. Yeah. So, so if you look at the course of a week, every time you hit a new all-time high, you would attribute that distance between that all-time high and the last all-time high as growth. And any deviation from that is uh, a loss of water. And so you can separate the signal into what, what is called the total water deficit and the growth, just by separating out whether or not you're on a trajectory to a new high or whether you're just varying below the last new high. And there is beautiful work um, by another scientist, um, an Italian guy, um, in Spain, who works in Spain, and he used two different dendrometers. And what he did was he, he claimed he could um, carve all the way back to the cambium or to the phloem, I guess. And so he had one on top of the bark and one on top of the phloem. And then, or maybe it was the cambium, I'm forgetting right now, but. But the idea was to separate the growth, the actual cell division from the, the vascular cambium from these uh, hydraulic signals. But I find it, it's beautiful work. Um, and a lot of people now are, are trying to put two dendrometers on every tree. But I just don't trust that you can actually, you, you don't know where the cambium is till you went too far. Yeah, so how do you, how do you cut into the tree? Now? I, I don't think I have the skill to do that, so I prefer just to say we'll measure everything and use the model like that separates it between growth yes, and, yes. and water mm -hmm. marks, mm -hmm. and, uh, and you get great information that way. So, so, so we're on a plot where, what's the predicted hypothesis for these trees as compared to a normal plot? Yeah, it's a great question. My, my prediction would be that with the non-oaks all removed from the canopy, that the resources available to the trees that remain mm -hmm. has gone up and therefore their resource utilization would go up, meaning they're going to grow more and they're going to use more water because they're not competing for light and water the way they used to right and they should be able to take advantage of that and grow even faster mm -hmm. and the other thing to think about Andy, is that these are all that's um, left in this plot are oaks mm -hmm. all the non-oaks were removed and so we'd like to ask a question if there's something particular about oak or is it just that if the canopy opens up any tree will do better mm -hmm. we'd like to know if the oaks have a, a particular response mm -hmm. that is unique and so you're putting dendrometers on other species we will in yeah other plots in this in this particular plot all the rest of the species Are, were removed right um as long as they were big enough to mm -hmm. be included in the experiment so this uh this birch was too small to be uh, mm -hmm. girdled, but if you look over there you see another tree that was a non-oak and therefore girdled and is no longer alive awesome mm -hmm.
One down. Yeah.